let's have a look at this week's NXT then, Ash. Like I say, I think AEW definitely a solid show like it is every single week. But uh, this week's NXT opened with uh, Roderick Strong um, and uh, sent out a clear message to the Velveteen Dream following uh, Dream's return next week. Uh, Roddy is obviously upset that the Dream had uh, his, you know, Marina Shafir and, and their child spray painted on his tights when the Dream made his return on last week's NXT, of course. Uh, Roddy demanded an apology from the Dream, but out came uh, the, the massive Bronson Reed who wanted some answers of his own from Roderick Strong after Strong gave uh, the big guy, Bronson Reed, a running knee to the head on last week's show. And that was uh, when uh, the Undisputed Era were kind of ploughing through the backstage area looking for Tommaso Ciampa and Reed got in the way. So Reed wanted a little bit of a, uh, an answer of his own this week. This gave us a bit of an impromptu match between Roddy Strong and Bronson Reed. Uh, this was, uh, you know, a match where Bronson Reed he kind of dominated most of the match with his power and his size to his advantage. Of course, there was a huge lariat from Bronson Reed that turned uh, Roddy Strong inside out, uh, and he only got a two count from that. But uh, Roddy managed to turn the tide with a, a superplex off the uh, off the middle rope to the big man uh, before Strong was uh, distracted by the voice of the Velveteen Dream. Uh, but not long enough, um, a, a Strong a caught Reed with a high knee when Reed was coming off the top rope. Um, and then that was enough for Reed to, to uh, kind of lay on his back for Strong. Strong hooked the leg, got the pinfall victory from that high knee. After the match, we did get the Velveteen Dream. Uh, came down, uh, came out uh, on, on the big screen, actually, on the time trying, making things even more personal for Roderick Strong, telling Strong that if anything were to happen to uh, to him, to Roderick Strong, then the Dream would be able to fulfil Marina's needs. Uh, so uh, obviously building a little bit of a, a tension, a little bit more... Uh, fuel to the fire between those two um, and I think it was advertised later on this show that Roddy Strong and the Velveteen Dream will be going head to head in a one on one match on next week's NXT so give us your thought on this kind of this opening segment and the opening match between Reed and Strong and of course the Velveteen Dream uh, kind of getting in Roddy Strong's business at the end of this segment um, actually as you pointed out like the match it was like a weird kind of thing but obviously points of Reed he's used to like his size getting that using his power and strength to literally just bulldoze through strong throughout the match. It's like yeah. towards the end of the match you thought, oh, is Bronson Reed going to get the upset upset win due to the distraction of um Velveteen Dream. But at the end of it, obviously Strong gets the win out of literally no well a stiff high knee to literally catch Reed off the Reed off the ropes and get the win. And the, pro, uh, the promo afterwards is literally reminds me of the old uh, I'm trying to remember now off the top of my head. Check the snake and Rick Rude kind of angle where they did Rubbish the Rick Rude, yeah, yeah, exactly. Rick Rude did a similar thing with his tights as well with um, Jack Snake's wife, if I recall. <laughs> yeah, I remember it very well, yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah. That, that's a really interesting angle. Like I say, the, the match was quite good. Good to give Bronson Reed a bit more exposure. I always thought he was one of the standout talents uh, from uh, the uh, kind of NXT breakout tournament that they ran last year. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, and of course... Jordan Miles went on to win that. What's happened to Jordan Miles or ACH since then, to be honest with you? Uh, I don't think he's doing much in his wrestling career now. He kind of shot himself in the foot there. Cameron Grimes pops up a little bit later on. He's doing well for himself. Uh, but uh, Angel Garza, of course, we know what's happened to him. Swerve Scott, he's uh, kind of building a bit of a name for himself. So it's a, a good kind of tournament to help uh, build, similar to the uh, Natural Progression series, I suppose, that Progress does every year. We mentioned that earlier. And hopefully um, at the NXT breakout tournament will happen with it. An annual thing, a yearly thing to help promote some of its newer talent. But um, yeah, good, good match, good way to open the NXT this week and uh, kind of a, a bit of a hot angle developing there between Roddy Strong and the Velveteen Dream. Um, but uh, then we had a number one contenders match for the NXT Cruiserweight Championship between two former champions, Ash, uh, Leo Rush and Angel Garza. This was a really fun match, a fantastic match, actually, uh, which had kind of everything. We even saw Rush deliver a frog splash from the top turnbuckle onto Garza, who was on the floor on the outside. That was pretty impressive. Looked painful for both wrestlers there, especially Garza, who was on the kind of the the bottom end of that one. Um, I think everyone was expecting a win for Garza, especially considering the push he's getting moment and uh, previous on NXT and 205 Live, uh, the amount of exposure that he's getting. Uh, but no, however, it was Leo Rush that got the win to become the new number one contender 
to the Cruiserweight Championship after a roll-up reversal uh, to uh, Garza's wing clipper. Um, so after the match, we then had uh, current NXT Cruiserweight Champion Jordan Devlin. He came out onto the stage to deliver a promo uh, face-to-face uh, to uh, Leo Rush, setting up uh, what's going to be a brilliant championship match once again on next week's NXT. So we spoke about, you know, the, the solid card that AEW are going to be delivering next week. Uh, next week's NXT ain't going to be half bad either, but uh, uh, give, give us your thoughts on, on the match that went down between Leo Rush Angel Garza, the kind of, some might say, surprising uh, victory for Leo Rush. And then, of course, what we got to come next week between Devlin and Leo Rush for the Cruiserweight Championship. Uh, the match in overall was just literally another classic between these two. They've had two stellar matches before, which is a great way to like kind of end. Literally, it was one one going into this. Literally, whatever won this was literally won the rather, won the rather, rather match. And Rush winning, it was kind of, it was kind of a surprise victory. I would thought you would have Garza go back after Devlin, after he's never lost the championship. He had Swerve bit pinned by Devlin for the title. So you thought, logically, Garza would be the main challenger. But I think with Leo going against it, it's an established name that's been across, especially in WWE and also on wrestling in general. You have someone could easily put Devlin over it in potentially a, quite a show-stealing match. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. And uh, like I say, shame to see Angel Garza on the losing end. That could possibly lead us to an angle where Angel Garza gets involved in the championship match next week. Or maybe they've got bigger plans for Angel Garza. Obviously, he's being used a bit more on Raw, being managed by Zelina Vega on, on the main roster, of course. Um, you know, he's, he's one of those that's kind of being exposed on many different brands, not just NXT. So uh, they probably thought that uh, it wouldn't hurt him at all. The, the loss wouldn't hurt him, but uh, I don't think it's hurt him. I think he's he's got a great character, a big personality, exit in the ring. So I don't think a loss like this is going to damage him. But I'm predicting possibly Angel Garza making an appearance during the championship match next week. I mean, I hope not, because I think that Rush and Devlin could have a fantastic match Give them, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes in the ring and they could easily have a show stealing match. But um, that's another one to look forward to and to watch next week on NXT. Uh, then we got uh, Bianca Belair. Uh, she made a quick work of Santana Garrett before addressing Rhea Ripley, saying how Ripley is uh, busy challenging Charlotte Flair on Raw, um, asking uh, if she's invisible. Um, Bianca Belair talking about herself there in the centre of the ring. Bianca, uh, sorry, Rhea Ripley then came out to tell Belair that uh, take over Portland. She's not going to look through her, but she's going to go right through Belair during that match. So this segment ends with uh, Belair um, dropping the current champion with her KOD. Now, whenever you see this on the go-home show to a big takeover, you kind of think, you know, it almost makes me sad, to be honest with you, Ash, because you think, well, Belair gets the upper hand. She gets one over on Rhea Ripley here, leaving her laying. And uh, is that possibly a prelude to Belair being on the losing end on Sunday night? But um, I hope not. Uh, but uh, what's your thoughts on the, on this feud? I know we're going to talk uh, Portland predictions fairly soon, um, but uh, do you have the same concerns, the same fears that I do that uh, Ripley got left laying here um, and, uh, you know, the reverse could happen on Sunday night? Yeah, it's kind of a normal kind of trophy wrestling when you have the, the challenge of literally standing tall over the champion on the go-home show. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of given that you're taking the pin on Sunday. It's one of those things you don't you you like you hate to see, but sometimes you do get it. Sometimes where you do have the then challenger still win the title, but yeah. I'll, I'll, as we're getting to later, I'll say who I'll say who's going to predict to win the match. But it's kind of given who might win the match, who's going to win the match. Yeah, I look forward to getting into that discussion in a few minutes when we talk uh, TakeOver Portland. And then that led us nicely into the main event. It was a non-title match. You had current NXT champion Adam Cole going up against Kushida. Uh, now, as I said, this was a, a non-title match. It was, I think, only advertised maybe the day before or the day of um, NXT this week. It was you, We didn't get much notice, or I certainly can't remember it being promoted much before NXT this week. Um, but, uh, you, you know, this would have made a perfect championship match, Kushida versus 
versus Cole on a pay-per-view or a takeover. Um, but I'm glad to be seeing it on a, on a, an episode of NXT, of course. This was a really fun match, a really, really fun match. Cole getting the win after a, a last shot with his exposed knee. Uh, shame to see Kushida on the losing end, much the same as it was a, uh, you know, a shame to see Angel Garza on the losing end during the uh, the match with Leo Rush earlier. But a shame to see Kushida on the losing end here. I thought Kushida gave a really, really good show in. Um, and uh, like I say, I thought that this match could potentially have been saved for a bigger uh, bigger stage, a bigger match somewhere down the line. But after the match, we had Tommaso Ciampa. He came out, um, uh, you know, in that kind of inevitable go-home, face-to-face stare-down that you always get between the current champ and the former champ. Uh, Ciampa says that at TakeOver Portland, he takes his life back. And Cole responds by saying, over his dead body. So... This was a really hot kind of segment to close NXT. Um, but I'm, I'm interested to know your thoughts on Cole versus Kushida. Like I said, this is a bit of a dream match, to be honest with you, and um, possibly could have been saved for a, a bigger occasion, a bigger stage, possibly worthy of a pay-per-view or, or a takeover. Um, but um, Kushida, he's a bit of an anomaly, really, isn't he? He's not had the best of starts in his NXT career. He's still on NXT most weeks, so they obviously you know, know what they've got in Kushida and are trying to utilise him, but I don't think they've come up with that, that gem of an angle, that gem of a storyline or a feud yet, where they can really push Kushida. Um, but uh, a bit of a throwaway match, especially with the title not being on the line. Uh, but you could ask yourself, could they have used somebody else instead of Kushida and given him the loss? Um, but give us your thoughts on the match and then your thoughts on uh, Tommaso and Cole and the stare down to finish the show. Uh, the match in general, because obviously they kind of build towards it, because he had Cole attack Kashida the prior week when he yeah, was looking for Champa. So yeah. that's kind of a little angle that they actually they actually did say on commentary, like why both Reed and Kashida are fighting both Strong and Cole is because they got attacked the previous week, so they just try and come back for revenge. So you've got kind of a little story there for the match to happen. Uh, the match in general is literally like a quite nice little match between the two. It's kind of a little. It's a shame to see Kashida win because he, since he's came, he's had he's had tight he had had surgery. I don't. Um, it was a ten, was it broken tendon in his hand? So he had to have like yeah, six, had six to, weeks off. A broken wrist or something, didn't he? After yeah. his match with Walter. Yeah, so that's kind of like set him back a bit. I could see Kashida possibly if they utilise him well, if not being used like push for a main title, you could possibly put him in the cruiserweight division. So I know he's appeared on two or five before his injury at the, towards the end of last year. Um, and the end of the segment was between Cole, Cole and Champion is literally a nice old trope where you have Champion and Challenge you close enough to being go-home show literally face-to-face and give, them, give their remarks to each other of why each of them are going to win the match. Yeah. And what was pretending was, early in the night, Cole said that he'll do anything to walk away from the title. Yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what what kind of plays out there. But uh, I mean, going back to Kashida, you you made a a really interesting point, and I I also going into this uh, this recording was thinking, well, where does Kashida fit in the big picture of everything? And I also think that Kashida would make an excellent cruiserweight champion, especially when you consider the cruiserweight champion is, is an NXT bout now. The, the, the NXT championship. Mm-hmm. Sorry, the Cruiserweight Championship is now an NXT uh, bout. It's uh, being featured on NXT a lot more. And um, I think that he would make a perfect... I mean, he's, he's, he's a multi-time IWGP junior heavyweight champion in New Japan, of course. And uh, that's kind of where he made his name. And also teamed with Alex Shelley in the uh, junior heavyweight tag team division as well over in New Japan. And I think, yeah, I mean, let's kind of give him a championship reign um, in kind of like a weight class that he is famous for and made his name in, um, essentially. And like I say, he's been on the black and gold brand now for about eight or nine months. He was out for a little while with his wrist injury. Um, but, uh, you know, they gave him a bit of a feud with Cassius Sona. They gave him a bit of a feud with Walter and Imperium. Uh, but nothing really to set the world alight at the moment. But I think give him a run with the Cruiserweight Championship. I don't really want to see Devlin lose it anytime soon, but I'd love to see a match between Devlin and Kushida. Possibly... Oh, I'm fantasy booking again already here, but I'd love to see that saved for WrestleMania weekend. You know, uh, TakeOver Tampa would be a great occasion to have Devlin Ooh, yeah, versus definitely. Kushida. I, I'm predicting it now. And uh, Triple H, if you're listening, get it down, make it happen. Uh, but uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, very, very good. Um, but um, 
Looking at next week's NXT, you've obviously got Roddy Strong versus the Velveteen Dream. That's going to be an awesome match. I think a lot of people are going to tune in for. And Jordan Devlin going up against Leo Rush for the Cruiserweight Championship. So two really, really big matches. I've got, I've got a question for you, though. This is the, the, the big $64,000 question. I think this has come up before, maybe in the podcast or on the Facebook page before. But does NXT, do they need to kind of get out of full sale, go on the road for their Wednesday night show on USA um, to help kind of make we've we've seen NXT in full sale or the NXT arena for what six years now since NXT first came on the network they've always kind of done it from full sale now when you compare the crowds uh, to AW on the road every single week the dynamites and the, the lively atmosphere and the infectious energy that the crowd at Dynamite bring to the overall presentation compared to Full Sail. Now, Full Sail, they, they could either be hot or cold. Um, but when you look at NXT, if it's a, a match that's not clicking, you know, they, they sit on their hands quite a lot of the time and they don't bring the atmosphere. So I'm thinking if you take the NXT product on the road for their Wednesday night shows, it could give a lot more people the opportunity to not only see the show, uh, but to be more interactive with the show and to bring that that atmosphere. I think the main thing is the, the general perception. Um, and I'm not saying this would kind of affect the ratings at all, but the perception is, is that AEW Dynamite is the bigger show because it's held in a bigger arena with more people and you've got you know 5,000 people watching Dynamite as opposed to 500 people at Full Sail. And the perception is that AEW Dynamite is the bigger show. If people are channel hopping from one to the other, if they go on to Full Sail, first of all, NXT, they're going to think, well, the atmosphere is not great there. Flick it over to, um, to TNT to watch uh, AEW Ash and see the atmosphere absolutely rocking over on Dynamite. And I'm thinking that NXT need a little bit of that uh, flavour as well. They need a little bit of that atmosphere. So maybe to take it on the road would do them some uh, a lot of favours, to be honest with you. But what say you? Yeah, I can see the point of it. Of them going, say, once a month, go to the, like go to when they're doing like tours across the country and specifically in certain states, have a TV taping in say not a big venue like a ten thousand like ten to fifteen thousand seats arena. Have one that's five to like between two to five thousand seats where yeah. you know you, you you put yourself into like an arena where you think okay we can go for this, see how it goes. If we can constantly sell this out, go to a big arena. Well, I feel this is kind of the thing where AEW are lacking a little bit because over the past few weeks and towards the end of last year, end of last year, they've not been consistently selling their arenas out because they've had quite a fair few. It's not just AEW in general. There's quite a lot of mainstream promotions. Well, mainly WWE's main brand is like they're not selling out the arenas consistently enough. Yeah, true. Yeah. You, you still see quite a lot of areas which are tarped off or like literally blank space and empty seats yeah so it's the kind of thing you don't want to obviously consistently do it. if you do like once say the last wednesday of the month as the arena show then the best is tv as back and full so you can have matches that build up to the one that's in the arena so yeah like, a, like a of... mini takeover like a mini yeah. takeover or like a little payoff episode no i really like that but yeah. um I think that taking it away from full sale for the odd week is a good idea, and it might also make them appreciate what they have, so they can kind of be a little bit more lively when they, you know, uh, have it back in in the NXT or the full sale arena. Um, but I think it's just just to. I mean, I think NXT definitely deliver the better wrestling product on a weekly basis. They definitely deliver the more solid show for wrestling. But I think when you look at AEW as an overall package. You know, and certainly the way they're building towards Revolution, as an example, and the storylines and the characters and the way they're getting over some of the new wrestlers. And then you add into that the audience participation, the atmosphere in the arena. Um, you know, it does kind of give you I mean, I, I, I'm going to say this as a, as a lifelong, a lifelong NXT fan. But since it kind of first uh, came out. Um, as a game show 10 years ago when you had Daniel Bryan being jobbed out every single week on, on that game show NXT so I've watched it from day one people um, but uh, you know as a, as, a, as a fan of the black and gold brand for a long long time I've got to say AEW are delivering the slightly more exciting product from, from end to end at the moment in my opinion but um, uh, any, any thoughts on that I mean I know that you watch AEW every week. I know you watch NXT every single week. Um, but uh, do you kind of understand my sentiments there? That I think, you know, overall, I think the arena does add a lot to the program. And I think that, you know, while NXT is delivering the better or the stronger wrestling show, 
a uh, wrestling performance in ring action. I think AEW are possibly delivering the better overall show in terms of character and storyline. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from. I see like the big picture of where AEW are performing a larger scale kind of arena, whereas obviously NXT is kind of in the compact arena. But obviously, sometimes that can be their fault. Sometimes having the compact yeah. arena can True. sometimes increase volume where it's like a yeah. big arena because I know like literally like with like Austin and Edge and Christian mates and when they've been in I, to, I think it's in Chicago I think it's the full uh, I can't remember the name of the arena but they say sometimes when you if the crowd is very hot because it's got wooden a wooden scene it bounces off of it it can literally create make the atmosphere even louder yeah, I know the arena you're on about. I can't remember where it is, but I know exactly the one you're on about, definitely. Um, but uh, yes, so uh, interesting times, interesting times. But I think they're probably already considering uh, maybe taking the product on the road. I think that's inevitable. I like to say, even if they do it once a month, um, you know, as, as a bit of a bit of a, a blow off episode, bit of a mini takeover. I think that could definitely work and add a bit of freshness to the product and give more people an opportunity to see NXT on the road, certainly for their big Wednesday night shows on USA. 